Jeffrey Hinton quit his job at Google and I have thoughts. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I make videos about how to be human in an AI world and if that sounds interesting to you, you can follow me here on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. Otherwise, let's 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 unpack this because it's this is a fascinating development for me. So if you have not been following the the language model AI chat bot world, things have been crazy. <laughs> there have been a ton of new releases lately. The the pace of, of releases and development feels like it's been accelerating in a way that it hadn't been in the years before, call it 2021. And with that came a lot of researchers at major tech companies deciding to speak out about their concerns about the development of these technologies or leave the company entirely or get fired. This has been interesting to watch for a lot of reasons. Primarily because up until this point, a lot of the people that I've seen leave are women and people of color. They, they are people who put in a lot of work early on to, to raise alarms around potential misuses of technologies, potential concerns around technologies. They are people whose literal job it was to interrogate the ethics of different AI systems and ended up getting fired for that. And so I feel like I won't say this culminates in, in Jeffrey Hinton deciding to leave Google, but it does feel like this is a, a particularly decisive point in that particular journey. So if you don't know, Jeffrey Hinton is a computer scientist. He started working at Google in 2013 and he quit earlier this year, earlier, I believe in, in late April or early May. He is, is most known for being I guess you would call it the father of backpropagation, which is a central part of, of machine learning systems and of training machine learning systems. And he quit his job at Google, according to him. There's been a ton of interviews with him that I'll link in the description. He quit because of a desire to be able to speak openly and honestly about concerns that he had around AI systems. And so when I saw that in the first place, I thought that was very interesting. There have been a, a couple interviews with him in places like the MIT Tech Review, and I'll, I'll put up the, the article that I'm referencing here, but in one article he, he essentially talks about how it wasn't until Google's Palm system was released and was able to explain why a joke was funny to him, as, as well as another AI system that he engaged with that he, I suppose, started to have concerns around how AI systems might be used and how they might progress. And I suppose I should say up top, um, all I know of his opinions and his stances are things are things that he has said to reporters. So he may believe other things than, than how his beliefs are coming across in media. I think that's entirely possible <laughs> knowing how media works. But I do find it odd that this is where you choose to leave. And maybe that's because I'm a woman and person of color and because I've been following this for six years now. So Hinton joins Google in 2013 because a company that he founded was acquired by Google. That's how he gets in. And this is an interesting time, I guess, to be joining Google because it's it's just before, I guess I would say, things start to blow up a little bit. I graduated college in 2018, and I would say by the time I was in college, AI was something that I was starting to hear about. And by the time I graduated, it was certainly becoming a mainstream topic of conversation. And with that, the concerns around the development of AI systems were also becoming fairly common and, and well-known areas of conversation. And so six years after that, he publicly announced his resignation from Google. This is something that he'd been apparently planning for at least a few months. He'd given notice and he explained his decision by saying that he wanted to be able to speak openly about the risks of AI and also that a part of him now regrets the work that, that he has contributed to in, in the growth of this field. And I suppose the rest of this video will be kind of my thoughts on this front. One thought, <laughs> mm, I'm trying not to be spicy. We'll see. We'll see what happens. 
So my first thought when I saw that he he had left Google due to concerns around AI, my first reaction was confusion, honestly, because AI risk concerns around AI development, they're not new topics. Like I've, I've had a channel on this for four and a half years and they were concerned before that. And so I, I find it very odd that someone who's considered to be one of the fathers of this field wasn't concerned up until this point. I don't know if he was concerned. He might have been and might not have been able to probably speak about that due to his employment at Google. I don't know. But I do, I found that part of the announcement to be odd. And I think the other thing that struck me with his resignation was the larger trend of people who might be gatekeepers around ethics, people who, who might be a line of defense around corporate AI research leaving the companies. Uh, and I think this is a really complicated decision, honestly. And I understand people who, who left of their own volition because they couldn't be part of the system anymore. I understand people who stay because they think they might be able to change it. But I, in the last year, I, I definitely have been more concerned about the direction that a lot of these big tech companies are going in when it comes to AI because they're firing their ethics teams. <laughs> And, and liquidating fairness research and very much deprioritizing the, the parts of their company that make sure that these systems are safe for us to use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's a really concerning trend and I think it's really concerning when, when companies do it and I think it's concerning when people leave because they don't feel that they can have impact in that space. I suppose the, the TLDR of this video is that Jeffrey Hinton quit his job at Google and I don't actually have strong opinions on that at the end of the day. I hope that he will speak out against improper uses of AI systems and give his opinion and, and backing to things like fairness research and safety research. I wonder why it was only in the last year that he began to be concerned about these systems because I feel like there was plenty of opportunity to be much more concerned about them before that. But as a larger pattern of, of people leaving the companies that are developing the systems that we all interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, things like ChatGPT, things like BARD, things like whatever else, whatever other systems you want to talk about, I, whether it's because the, the company is, is firing those people or laying those people off or because those people are choosing to leave because they don't feel they have a place there, I, I do worry about that trend and not having having people who can help to make sure that these systems actually help all of us. So having said all that, I am still following the, the AI news space. I actually will probably be doing a live stream next Saturday on a very funny archive preprint that someone uploaded on basically, if you're an academic researcher in the AI space, like, what do you do? <laughs> Considering how things are currently. So you can check out that live stream once I put it up. I'll probably put it up after I put up this video. And of course, if you're interested in following AI trends, I don't make this video to discourage that. It is an incredible, very fast paced field and there's always new stuff coming out. And if you're interested in dipping your toes in, but don't know how to survive the fire hose that is AI news, I would highly recommend checking out Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. I've been using Brilliant for years now and their courses have been incredibly helpful for when it comes to getting my bearings in new scientific fields without having to dedicate several consecutive hours to a course. For example, when I was in high school, I was really interested in astrophysics. I thought that, that was what I was going to go into. And while that is not the path that I ended up taking, I did take Brilliant's course on astrophysics, which I really enjoyed and definitely scratched that scientific itch. And if you're worried that you won't have time to take their courses, do not worry. Their courses are broken down into bite-sized pieces that you can fit in whenever you have time during your workday or at home. And if AI isn't your thing, Brilliant's a great resource to learn about a ton of other STEM topics.
By signing up for Brilliant, you will get access to thousands of interactive lessons and will join a community of like-minded individuals who are also passionate about learning. Their platform offers a variety of problem sets and interactive challenges that allow users to test and apply their knowledge, which is a great way to solidify and retain the concepts that you learned. To get started for free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org slash Jordan or use the link in the description and the first 200 people to sign up will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription.